Good morning and welcome to worship at Pleasant Hill Presbyterian Church this Palm Sunday. We are glad that you are worshiping online with us today. I'm joined in worship leadership today by pastors Katie Day and Jody Andrade, by scripture reader and Margot Ashley, by uh, musician Hinju Song, and music from our choir directed by Steve Dean. And as always, this worship service is produced and edited by Claire Kaiser, so thank you. We have just a couple announcements for you today. The first is that we are collecting a special offering today known as the One Great Hour of Sharing. This is an offer, offering collected by Presbyterian churches all throughout our denomination across the country. And you will hear more about where these funds go from Pastor Jody during the offering, but we hope you'll consider giving um, to this special offering today. It is Holy Week this week, and so beyond just today's events of Palm Sunday, there are many opportunities for you to engage um, with the week through reading, through walking stations of the cross, through a special service on Monday, Thursday at the church, through an online service on Good Friday, through a prayer vigil that will carry us to Easter Sunday. And then of course, with our Easter services next Sunday, um, there are two in-person services, one at 7 a.m., a sunrise service, and one at 11 a.m. in our parking lot. And we will be streaming starting at 8.30 a.m. here online. And you can find more details about all of that in um, your email that has come out on Friday. And there's been special Holy Week emails, so look there for details. We hope that this Holy Week you will find ways to walk in, walk alongside the stories of Jesus' last week, to join in community with one another, and to begin today by worshiping God. So let us take a moment to transition from getting here to being here and focus our hearts and minds on God, the God that we worship. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you. On this Palm Sunday, let us call ourselves to worship. If you have a palm, I encourage you to wave it as we say the words printed on your screen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is God's coming kingdom. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest.
And now it's time for confession. God gives us expansive minds, and yet we use precious little of them and often focus on the wrong things. Let's confess now the difference between who God created us to be and who we really are. Oh God, this is it, the big promise, the one where you reveal yourself, God among us, in shouts of Hosanna, in bread and wine, in the cries in the garden, in the silence of the judgment hall, in the death on the cross. Our expectations of you are limited. We do not understand. We fall asleep to your call. We feel hopeless in the face of death. Open our ears to hear again the promise that changes us, that changes everything. Amen. People, hear the good news. God's grace and mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. And now, with the peace that comes with being fully forgiven, let us offer a sign of Christ's love to one another by saying, may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Hi, everyone. Hosanna! We're waving palms today. Today is Palm Sunday, and it is the beginning of the most important week in our whole Christian church year. We call this week Holy Week, and every year we get ready for the good news of Easter for 40 days during the season of Lent, and Holy Week is the last week before Easter. Easter. And we remember the things that Jesus did in his last time in Jerusalem. So let's hear about what happened on that busy week. So on Sunday, woohoo, Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem riding on a donkey and people waved palm branches just like we do today. On Monday, the next day, Jesus went into the temple in Jerusalem and he saw people buying and selling things in God's house in a way that was really unfair. So I have money to remind me of this story. And Jesus got angry and he tipped over the tables. On Tuesday, Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was. And I have a heart to remind me of what he said. He said the greatest commandment is to love God and to love your neighbor, love one another. So it's all about love. On Wednesday, a woman uh, took some very special perfumed oil, and that's what I have here. I have some oil that a friend brought me from a trip to Jerusalem, and it smells, uh, it smells really nice. It smells kind of like roses. It's perfumed oil. And in the story about Jesus on that Wednesday, a woman took that special perfumed oil and she poured it on his head. It's kind of a curious story, isn't it? But this oil reminds me of what Jesus did on Wednesday. And on Thursday, Jesus had his last meal with his disciples, with his friends and followers. It was his last chance to teach them what was the most important thing that he wanted them to remember, which is this, that God's love is like everyone sitting around a table together sharing a meal. And that's what Jesus did with his friends on that night. And so I have one of our communion cups, it's called a chalice, to remind me of that Thursday. And when we have communion, we remember Jesus' last supper, and we have bread, and we have grape juice instead of wine, just like he taught us. And I hope that you'll come to church this Thursday to remember this special meal that Jesus had and to eat sandwiches together with your church family. I would like to see you there at six o'clock. So on Friday of Holy Week, Jesus was placed on the cross where he died. 
And I have this cross to remind me of that. This is a beautiful cross that was uh, designed by somebody here in our sanctuary, a paper craft. Um, it's a really sad story on Friday, but we know that the cross and that Friday is not the end of the story. On Saturday, it was very quiet. And then, on Sunday morning, Easter morning, Jesus came back to life. This is the most amazing and wonderful mystery of all. And I don't have an object to remind me of Easter Sunday because where I am is what reminds me of that. The church, we have the church. We have Pleasant Hill and all of the churches all over the world because of what happened on Easter. On Easter Sunday, we come to church then, or we, we watch worship, we participate in worship online to remember that God's love is the greatest thing. So friends, will you pray with me? I'll say a couple words and then you repeat after me and we'll pray together. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for Holy Week. Thank you for teaching us that you are with us always and your love is the most powerful thing in the world. Amen. All right, friends. Thank you for walking through Holy Week with me. I hope to see you this week. Bye. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Holy God, may your word grow in us alongside the gift of faith so that we may plant their seeds in the world around us. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes to us from Psalm 118 in the Old Testament, verses 1 and 2, and verses 19 through 29. Please listen for God's word to us today. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and God has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
Our second reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven! Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is Palm Sunday. And since you're watching online, you won't get to do our planned parade in the parking lot. But I hope that you have gotten a palm at home or found a branch in your yard and you waved along to our first hymn. We are officially in Holy Week now when we remember the last events of Jesus' life. And today we remember a big parade. I love being a spectator at a good parade. Whatever the occasion, the Duluth Fall Festival, or Mardi Gras, or a college homecoming, there are certain things that happen at a parade that make it a good one. I believe these things include at least two good marching bands, candy being thrown out into the crowd, a few well-decorated floats, some fire truck sirens blaring, and something good at the end, like Santa at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. When I started high school marching band, I thought that being in my first parade would be almost as fun as being a spectator. Now I was part of the entertainment. I imagined looking sharp and pumping up the crowd and still getting some of that candy because surely they would save that for some of the participants at the end. And I was on the drum line and everyone knows they're the best part of the marching band. We showed up. Two hours before the parade even started on a cold February morning so we could get in the lineup. By the time the parade started, my feet and my back were already tired from lugging my, yes, my bass drum around. When the parade finally began, my excitement rose again a little bit. I paid attention and stayed in step and watched my lines and kept the beat with our drum cadences. And what was special about this parade is that there were no vehicles allowed, only people on foot. And I forgot to mention, this was the Fort Worth, Texas Stock Show and Rodeo Parade, so only people on foot and livestock. Lots and lots of livestock, leaving behind mounds of steaming poop that we marched right through all the way to the end of the parade. And at the end of the parade, Do you know what the band gets? It's not candy. The band just gets back on the bus. I wasn't all wrong. We did pump up the crowd. We probably looked kind of sharp when we weren't dodging the landmines on the ground. But my expectations were a little misplaced about what this experience would be like. During the season of Lent, we've been walking through the stories of God's covenants, God's big promises with God's people. And God has made some big ones. Promise never again to flood the earth, to make Abraham and Sarah's descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, to get God's people out of slavery in Egypt to the promised land, 
to love and not condemn the world, to write God's law on our hearts and forgive us, never looking back. And God's people received these covenants, and over and over again, we, God's people, develop some big expectations around them. Based on these promises, God's people expected a savior, a messiah, a king who would come and deliver them, God's chosen people. They expected some mighty military action that would overthrow the powerful Roman Empire that oppressed them and put them on top. They expected freedom as God accomplished God's big promises. In our story today, the crowd is joining Jesus in journeying to Jerusalem for the Passover. Around 200,000 faithful pilgrims would travel to the city for this feast, which centers around a story that harkens back to one of those big covenant promises God made, to bring the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt into freedom. The Jews who were preparing to celebrate the feast in a city occupied and ruled by Rome would not have missed the irony of celebrating freedom from oppression while they were still being ruled by Rome. But this is not the only parade happening. While thousands of Jews pour into Jerusalem for the Passover, waving their palms, Pontius Pilate, the one who will later order Jesus' crucifixion, is riding in his own parade on the other side of the city in his regular imperial demonstration of power that just so happens to coincide with all major Jewish festivals. With a parade of cavalry and soldiers, Rome reminds the people of Jerusalem who is really in charge. Jesus and everyone walking with him would have known of this other parade, which is why Jesus has so carefully planned his entrance. The Gospel of Mark takes pains for the reader to notice these details in a short and to-the-point book that wastes very few words. He instructs the disciples on where to find the donkey, asking them to publicly announce what they will be using it for. So it's no wonder that the expectations of the crowd grows as they witness this coming challenge to the powers that be. They lay their cloaks before him, a gesture attributed to royalty. They welcome him as a king. The crowd shouts, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. These are shouts of defiance, protest, and hope for expectations to be fulfilled in a new kingdom rule. But as much as the crowd expected and welcomed a king, Jesus was giving them a different set of context clues. A king preparing for battle would ride in on a big, strong war horse. But Jesus chooses a donkey. Using symbolism from Old Testament prophet Zechariah, who promised that a king would come to Jerusalem humble and riding on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So yes, he comes as royalty, but as royalty who comes with something other than military might in mind. A king preparing to overthrow a city would surely have some words, a response to the crowd's praises. But we hear nothing from Jesus in this story, except for his directions on where to get the colt, to tell people that the Lord needs it. A king would ride near the front of the procession, flanked by a royal guard and trailed by soldiers. But did you hear in the story in verse 9, then those who went ahead and those who followed behind were shouting their hosannas? Jesus rides in the middle of the pack, led and followed by chanting pilgrims coming to Jerusalem for Passover. And then, when he finally arrives at the temple, he goes in and he looks around and then he goes home for the night. Pretty anticlimactic for such a triumphant arrival. But Jesus doesn't come to meet the crowd's expectations of domination and triumph and victory. He comes in humility, riding among and with the crowd as they enter Jerusalem, shouting, Hosanna! 
in our Lenten small group I've been participating in this season. We spent some time with this word humility a couple weeks ago. Jill Duffield, the author of the Lenten devotional book we've been using, Lent in Plain Sight, offers the story of John the Baptist as an example of this virtue when he's questioned by the priests and Levites. They want to know who he is and what he says about himself, and John tells them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one who you do not know, the one who's coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. She writes, Jill writes, clarity of purpose and an unwavering belief in God's call paves the way for a life that inevitably points away from self and toward the divine, a life that prepares a path for the present and coming Messiah. Our small group wondered about how one goes about cultivating and practicing humility, a virtue that seems more complex than empathy or generosity. And I wonder if humility has anything to do with our expectations. When God's people expect God's promises to be filled in a certain way, we live out our faith based on these expectations. If God will send a mighty king, then we are ready to conquer those who oppose us. If God will bring military victory, then we will train as soldiers who will fight in the Lord's army. But when God shows up on a donkey... When God shows up at the dinner table, or when God shows up dying on a cross, we are exposed. Because when we expect a God who will deliver to us power, might, and worldly victories, we are not pointing to God at all. We are pointing toward ourselves. Our own desire for power, our need to win. The people gathered on that first Palm Sunday were preparing a way but not for the Messiah they were expecting. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a little Palm Sunday parade and joining in the hosannas of the enthusiastic crowd. But if we are to live lives that prepare a path for the present and coming Messiah, we must turn our fingers away from ourselves and back towards Jesus. We must carefully choose which kind of parade we'll be joining and consider our expectations as we join it. What does it mean for us to join in a parade with Jesus riding into the world this Palm Sunday? Jesus is riding into a world trying to beat our way through COVID and return to normal. A world where mass shootings are commonplace. A world where we seek to elevate our nation's wealth and success above all others. And if Jesus' entrance into this week in 2021 is anything like the first Palm Sunday, he won't be coming in military might to conquer all our problems. Jesus isn't riding at the front as a commander of an army or as Santa Claus at the end of the parade. God sends Jesus among us riding on a donkey, paving a path of humility. He's behind and among us as we pick up our branches and welcome him here today. We are not just spectators at a good parade. We're the marching band, carrying the tune, keeping the beat, and sludging through the horse crap, playing a tune that points beyond ourselves. The path of humility is not always an easy one for us. For even when we see God riding among us, our expectations turn toward ourselves. And this is not something we easily change. It takes practice, intention, and a willingness to recognize and set aside our expectations. With Holy Week ahead of us, intentional opportunities to work on this abound. Starting today, you can find a modern take on the Stations of the Cross set up around the Pleasant Hill campus, um, starting at our soon-to-be-planted raised bed gardens behind the kitchen, where you can let your feet guide you and short readings and reflections ground you. You might expect, Stations of the Cross, well, that's just a Catholic thing. But as you put your feet to prayer, expect to travel far. If you're looking to dig deeper and reset your expectations about who Jesus is and what he was all about, 
The Explorations class is meeting daily beginning tonight at 7.30 to read through and discuss Marcus Borg's book, The Last Week. And guess what? You've already done the reading for today, which focuses on Mark 11, 1 through 11, what we have just read. Details are in your e-news if you'd like to attend. You might think, well, I've heard these stories. I know Jesus. But as you read and share with others, expect to be challenged. On Thursday, gather your family for dinner using the Maundy Thursday at home resource, or come join us here for a simple dinner and service out on the back lawn, centering around Jesus' command to love one another. You might expect you're not going to have time for that this week. But as you pause and eat, expect to be nourished. On Friday, you can tune into an online Good Friday service and take some time to sit in the story of the death of Jesus and the grief of those who were close to him and join in on an all-church prayer vigil that will carry us to Christ's resurrection on Easter. You might expect that this is a little too contemplative for your style. But as you just sit with this story of traumatic injustice and deep, deep grief and sadness, expect to meet God there. Come next Sunday, Easter, you think you know what to expect. Loud brass trumpets, the same old story of the stone rolled back after we've been waiting, waiting, and waiting for some good news to break in. Expect this story to contain something new for you, though. For as good as it is to try and set our expectations, it's even better to be surprised when a shout of Alleluia rolls off of our tongue. Amen. Join me in affirming our faith together today with a portion of the PCOSA's brief statement of faith. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. Amen. It's time now to go to God in prayer. We'll start with a silent prayer. I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer, and then together we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. God, we love a parade. The excitement of gathering together, all behind a united purpose, waving our palms, shouting with joy. We love a parade. Come to us in our joy as we celebrate the triumph of our King, Jesus Christ, who processes into our hearts and rules there for all eternity. God, we love our sacraments. We wait with eager anticipation to eat from your table, drink from your cup, and baptize one of our own next week on Easter Sunday. Fill our week of waiting with sacred glimpses of you in our fellow church members, in family, in strangers we encounter, in the vibrance of the yellow tulip, and the pink cherry tree in your created world, and in every type of relationship we treasure. God, we want to turn away from the difficult things in life. Like Christ himself in the garden, we plead, 
If you are willing, remove this cup from me. We don't want to make sacrifices to think of others before ourselves, to give up our place in line. God, open our eyes to the specific sacrifices you are calling each of us to make. Strengthen us so we may bravely choose the path of discipleship. God, we read that Christ was abandoned by his disciples in the judgment hall. The silence of his followers stood in stark contrast to the shouts of Hosanna in the streets. Give us the voice to break that silence, to speak strong and loudly when systems oppress the weak, when power silences truth. May we name what is wrong and insist on what is right and good and pleasing in your eyes. Lord, may we not only walk in your path, but sing your praises boldly. God, it has been a year for us in which death seeped into every crevice in our world. The cross looks especially familiar to us these days. Death has stolen family members prematurely. Death has wrapped its tentacles around precious relationships, destroying the grace we once granted one another so easily. For more than a year, we have been sitting in darkness, isolated, confused, paralyzed. Give us the strength to endure the darkness, to wade through it, to confront our fear and sorrow. We know what comes next in the story, Lord Jesus. The jubilation of today's palm parade will quickly fade away. Holy Week is it's filled with confusion, rejection, isolation, and finally death. May we walk through this darkness deliberately, knowing that to follow you means we embrace the difficult parts of the human experience. We pray for the courage and strength to face the darkness directly and for the faith to endure it. And as we stand in the dark, not seeing a way forward, may we stand shoulder to shoulder and pray with one voice the words you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now it's time for our offering. Our first impulse is to throw a big parade and then just hope that God takes care of everything. But God wants more for us. God invites us to join the parade. Let's give of our tithes and offerings as much as we can to build up Christ's kingdom through this church. Beyond your time and talent, you may give your treasure to the church. You see on your screen various ways to support Pleasant Hills Ministry. You may also contribute to today's special offering, One Great Hour of Sharing, through the drop-down menu online or by making a note on your check. Each gift to One Great Hour of Sharing supports worldwide efforts to relieve hunger through the Presbyterian Hunger Program, to promote development through the Presbyterian Committee on the Self-Development of People, and assist in areas of disaster through Presbyterian Disaster Assistance. Let us pray. Holy God, we know between Palm Sunday and Easter morning, you encountered a number of trials. We pray our church will be guided by your strength, determination, and faith as we put these offerings toward the trials of today. Use all we have to offer, God, as we join your parade. Amen. Friends, go out today and have a parade. Wave your palms and shout, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But think carefully about which parade you will choose and why you'll be part of that parade. Set aside your expectations this Holy Week and join in the ministry of Jesus Christ, who is present among us in all circumstances. Go knowing that wherever you go, the love of our Creator, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us in every step and in every breath that we take. Amen.